Hello everyone and welcome to my top 5 of the spring sale on Steam. So if you're wondering what to buy, um, I would go with these. So let's start. Let me set the scene. We're on the Italian front, which is like the indie band of World War I battlefields. It's not the Western front greatest hit, but it got its own charm, you know? So the Alps, the rivers, the whole a farewell to harms vibe. And Izonzo nails this setting perfectly. It's like the game developers took a time machine back to 1915, snapped some photos, and then made a game out of them. So the landscapes are gorgeous in a haunting, I can't believe people actually fought here kind of way. The gameplay of Izonzo isn't your run of the mill shooter, it's more like a thinking person shooter. You can just run and gun or you'll just die, you've got to strategize, communicate with your team, and make use of the terrain. It's like chess, but with more explosion and less quiet contemplation. But here's the kicker. The game is tough. It's not, I can't beat this level tough, but I need to rethink my life choices tough. It's not for the faint of heart or for the short of patience. If you're the type who throws your controller at the TV after dying for the 10th time, maybe stick to something a little more forgiving. And sure, Izonzo has its quirks, there's bugs, like any game, and sometimes the learning curve feels more like a learning cliff, but there's something undeniably compelling about it. It's like the game is challenging you personally to master it. And when you do, when you finally capture that objective after a hard-fought battle, it feels like a real accomplishment. So, should you play Izonzo? If you're into history, strategy, and don't mind a challenge, absolutely. And if you prefer your games with less mud and more space lasers, maybe give it a pass. But either way, you've got to respect a game that tries to do something different and does it with style. Number two on the list will be Hell Let Lose. So if you're the type who likes your war game served with a side of greedy realism, Hell Let Lose is going to be your jam. Picture this. It's World War II, but instead of playing it safe with a Hollywood-style retelling, this game throws you into the mud-soaked boot of an average soldier. And let me tell you, it's about as forgiving as a drill sergeant on a bad day. The first thing you'll notice about Hell Let Loose is the scale. We're talking 50 versus 50 battles that, that makes your typical shooter skirmishes look like playground tiffs. The maps are huge, and when I say huge, I mean you could probably fit your apartment complex in there with room to spare. It's all about capturing sectors, holding the line, pushing forwards, just like the real deal. But here's where it gets interesting. Teamwork isn't just Anchorage, it's mandatory. You've got roles like medics, engineers, squad leaders, and if you're not working together, you might as well wave a white flag. It's like being part of a well-oiled machine, except the machine is made of flesh and blood and runs on pure adrenaline. Now, let's talk graphics. Hell Let Loose doesn't just look good. It looks like someone traveled back in time with a 4K camera. The attention to detail is insane. You can practically smell the gunpowder and feel the weight of your gear. It's immersive to the point where you might forget you're sitting on your couch and not anchored down in a foxhole. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Well, it's actually never sunny in hell let loose. It's more like perpetual overcast with a chance of artillery fire. The game can be brutal, both in difficulty and in the toll that it takes on your virtual psyche. It's not uncommon to spend 20 minutes flanking an enemy position only to catch a bullet from a sniper you never saw. It's the kind of game that makes you appreciate the respawn button. In conclusion, Hell Let Lose is a love letter to the chaos and camaraderie of war. It's not for the lone wolves or the faint of heart, but if you're willing to dive into the trenches, work with your squad, and face the horrors of war head on, you're in for one hell of an experience. Number three on the list is Foxhole. So Foxhole is one of those games that makes you wonder why nobody thought of it sooner. It's like someone took the concept of a persistent online war and said, hey, what if we made this so insanely detailed that players could spend hours just organizing supply lines? And you know what? It works. So the first thing you need to understand about Foxhole is that it's not just a game, it's a commitment. You're not just a soldier, you're a cog in a massive war machine that never stops, even when you log off. The battlefields are alive, with players on both sides strategizing, building, and fighting 24-7. It's like a war team ant farm, and you're one of the ants. But here's the kicker, everything in Foxhole is player driven. Want ammo? Someone's got to make it. Need a bridge to cross the river? Better find some engineers. 
It's a game that forces you to think about war in a way that's more logistic simulator than action movie. And surprisingly, it's fascinating. The community is the heart and soul of Foxhole. Since teamwork is so crucial, you'll find players who are more than willing to show the ropes for newbies. There's a sense of camaraderie that's rare in online games. You're all in the trenches together, literally and figuratively. Now, Foxhole isn't without its flaws like the other games. The graphics are functional, but it won't blow your mind. And the pace of the game can be glacial, especially if you're used to more fast-paced shooters. But these are minor quibbles in the grand scheme of things. In conclusion, Foxhole is a unique beast. It's a game that demands patience, cooperation, and a willingness to embrace the mundane aspect of warfare. But for those who are up for the challenge, it offers an experience that's uh, as rewarding as it is unconventional. It's a reminder that sometimes the most exciting battles are the ones you don't see in the headlines. Now, that brings us to number four, the Great War Western Front. The Great War Western Front is like a history book come to life, but with a lot more clicking and less paper cuts. It's a game that puts you in the boots of a World War I general, and let me tell you, it's about as relaxing as a cup of coffee laced with espresso shots. You're constantly balancing the thrill of strategic planning with the looming dread of trench warfare's grim reality. You're in charge of either the Triple Alliance or the Entente, guiding them through the muck and mire of 1914-18. It's all about attrition. Every move you make is like a drop in the bucket of a never-ending well of defense and offense. The game doesn't shy away from the fact that this was a war of grinding down your opponent, both on the real-time battlefields and in the turn-based strategic map. Now, let's be honest, the game can feel a bit like a long march through no man's land. It's not that it's bad, it's just that it's so relentless. You're not going to find any glorification of war here. It's all about the harsh realities, the destruction, the mass death, and yet, there's something strangely compelling about it. It's like watching a train wreck in slow motion. You know it's going to end badly, but you can't look away. The game's mechanics are a double-edged sword. On one hand, the depth of strategy is impressive. You've got to manage your troops, your supplies, your national will, all while trying to outmaneuver your opponent. On the other hand, it can feel like a bit of a slog. The battles are brutal, and even a victory can feel like a loss when you consider the cost in virtual lives. But here's the thing. The Great War Western Front doesn't pretend to be anything it's not. It's a war game that's as much about endurance as it, as it is about tactics. You're not going to find any Hollywood heroics here. It's all about the grind, the struggle, the sheer stubborn stubbornness of keeping your army moving forward. In the end, The Great War Western Front is a game that will test your patience and your strategic chop. It's not for the faint of heart, but if you're up for a challenge and a dose of historical reality, it's definitely worth a look. Just don't expect to come out of it feeling like a conquering hero. This is a game that's all about the hard-fought Pyrrhic victories. And then comes number one, Unity of Command 2. Unity of Command 2 is like the sequel you didn't know you needed until you played it. It's as if the developers took the original game, threw in a bunch of new mechanics, and somehow ended up with a war gaming masterpiece. It's kind of like when you add bacon to a cheeseburger. It's just better. The game keeps the simplicity that made the first one a hit, you know, the whole moving troops and tanks uh, around without worrying about the politics. But it has a layer of complexity that makes it feel like you're really in charge of a massive military operation. It's like going from playing with toy soldiers to commanding an actual army, but without the risk of getting mud on your boots. One of the coolest things is the way combat works. It's all about the steps. Each division has these little dots, and when they get into a scrap, it's like a math equation with explosions. The game does all the heavy lifting for you, showing the likely outcomes without making you break out a calculator. It's kind of like having a wargaming butler. But let's be real, Unity of Command 2 doesn't hold your hand. It's like that one teacher who knows you're smart enough to figure it out, so they just give you a nudge in the right direction. Figuring out how to reassign steps and manage logistics is like solving a puzzle, but with higher stakes than just a pat on the back. The strategy is where this game shines. It's not just about throwing troops at the enemy, it's about orchestrating breakthroughs and exploiting gaps. It's like playing chess, but the pieces can blow stuff up. And capturing railway depots, that's the cherry on top of this military strategy Sunday. Now about the HQ units, they're like the brain of your operation, and they can pull off some 
pretty cool tricks like suppressing artillery fire or organizing emergency supplies. It's like having a Swiss Army knife, but instead of a corkscrew, it has tanks. The game's campaign is like an historical roller coaster, taking you from North Africa to the end of the Western Front. And the prestige system, it's like a currency that buys more than just upgrades, it buys glory. But spend it wisely, because in war, as in life, you can't always get what you want. In conclusion, Unity of Command 2 is like a fine wine in the world of war games. It's complex, satisfying, and gets better with time. If you're into strategy games, this one's a no-brainer. Just be prepared to put on your thinking cap, because this game's about more than just moving pieces on a board. And there you go! I hope you've enjoyed my top 5 purchases. This is not a top 5 game in order, it is just my top 5 purchases for the spring sale on Steam. These are relatively cheap and they will offer you hundreds, if not thousands maybe, of hours of gameplay. If you did enjoy that, like and subscribe. And if you didn't, well, there's other reviews, videos out there that you can enjoy. Thanks for watching everyone and have a great day. Goodbye.